We're going to be starting the webinar now. Uh, my name is Tom Kim. I'm a neurosurgeon, and I am at the University of Texas and practice at Memorial Hermann Hospital and the Mission Neuroscience Institute. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about gamma knife radio surgery because, uh, one, I do a lot of procedures using this uh, excellent technology. So many of my patients will uh, be going through the gamma knife. I perform almost 100 gamma knife surgeries a year. And over the last few years, obviously several hundred. And um, there are other patients who I hope will find this informative. And so I'm going to try to go over with you a description of what the gamma knife is. Really, what do we mean when we say radio surgery? How is it different from regular surgery or more conventional types of radiation? Uh, when do we use the gamma knife? And um, what are some of the risks associated with it? And I hope that at the end of the presentation, you'll have a good idea of um, what this technique is and how it might apply to you. So first, a little bit of history. This is the brainchild, really, of a Swedish neurosurgeon, a, a giant in our field who practiced in the early, early part of uh, the last century. Um, and his name is Lars Lexell. And really, in 1968, he developed the gamma knife, and it started there, and um, then came to the US. So let me tell you how the gamma knife works. In regular radiation treatment, as you know, radiation can be effective treatment for many conditions, such as cancer. In regular radiation treatment, you have a beam of radiation that goes through your whole body, including the area of the lesion. So your skin, bone, brain, and the tumor would get a similar dose. The reason that radiation works is that, for example, your tumor might be very, uh, might be more sensitive to the radiation than your normal tissue. So you can find a dose where the tumor is affected, but the effects to the surrounding normal tissue is not so severe. But there are always effects. And if any of you have had standard radiation, for example, your skin can get irritated and turn red or scar, and certainly it can have effects on the brain. And that's what limits the amount of radiation we can give and the type of treatment. Now, the gamma knife is very different. and the idea that Dr. Lexell had, which is very helpful, is to have not one big beam of radiation or a source, but to have 201 individual sources of radiation. In this particular case, it's an isotope of cobalt. And this radiation is arrayed inside the machine around what's called a collimator, which is a very thick lead shielding. Now, in the collimator are long tubes that only let a beam of radiation go through that long tube. So it's not just a one large beam of radiation that goes through the head, but multiple tiny pencil-like beams of radiation that comes through the collimator. And it's angled so it can all be focused on one spot. In this case, let's say the tumor. So the beauty of the gamma knife is where all of these 201 beams focus, you get a very large dose, and then the surrounding tissue, of course, gets one two hundredth of a dose, a very small dose. So it's a very precise technology that lets us target lesions that we want, delivering high doses of radiation, but really minimizing the radiation to the surrounding tissue. And because of that, the gamma knife can be done in one session generally, whereas regular radiation, for any of you that have gone through it, you have to go five days a week, and it can be several weeks. And the main advantage is that you really limit the amount of radiation that your normal tissues get. So this is a more schematized version of what happens. This is what it looks like in the machine. This is the collimator that I talked about out here, 
This is a scheme of all the beams coming to a focus. And then this is a frame that I'll describe in more detail that goes on the patient and we get a scan with a frame and then we use the MRI to target it. And by moving the head inside this machine, we can move it exactly to the place where the lesion is. In addition, by playing with which holes are open and which are closed, we can actually make the dose of radiation that the tumor receives different shapes. So it's not just one round circle, and we can use multiple small circles, and I'll talk about that. So why is it called radial surgery? Because it uses radiation, but unlike standard radiation, which is just one big beam that goes through the whole patient, this is more focused, more surgical, like precision, and in many instances, this technology can replace the need to have surgery at all, and therefore, the term radial surgery is used. But unlike regular surgery, we don't operate on the patient. That's how it's different. There's no incision. The recovery time is lower. And there are instances where you need regular surgery, but when you don't, this is quite a good alternative. And it's different from other types of radiation by being so focused. Now, what does all this radiation do to the lesion itself? Most of the lesions we're going to be talking about are tumors of some sort. And I will mention that I have other webinars involving specific tumors that you can look at. But what it does to a tumor is it chops up the DNA inside the cells of the tumor. Radiation affects DNA by cutting it. When DNA is cut, the tumor cells can't divide, and so they'll either die or they'll become static, but they won't keep growing. For trigeminal neuralgia, which I'll talk about also, there's a different mechanism, and I'll discuss that when we get to it. But mostly, what it does is it cuts the DNA. So this is what the gamma knife machine looks like. The very first uh, unit that came to the United States was put in Pittsburgh in 1987. It wasn't long after that where um, a unit was installed in Herman Hospital. So in Houston, it was the very first unit. And I think in Texas, we have uh, the most significant experience. Um, just a few years ago, we put in the latest version of this technology, which is really superior. And this is what the machine looks like. Those of you getting uh, therapy here will see this. This is where you lie on as a patient. There's a frame and the head goes here. The collimator and the cobalt sources are in the machine. The doors open. The bed slides into it. You don't feel anything in there. The radiation becomes focused in space right on your tumor or trigeminal nerve. After a certain period, you slide out and the treatment is done. I don't know exactly the number of patients we've treated here. It's probably getting close to 3,000 now. But it's a very significant experience. So let's talk about the different types of diseases that we treat with a gamma knife. Um, the most effective types of tumors that we treat are benign tumors that are in the head, that are around the brain, but not in the brain. And they go by the names of meningiomas, uh, the true name of vestibular schwannomas. These are tumors that arise on the nerves going to and from the ear to the brain. The older term is acoustic neuroma. You might have heard of that because it does involve the hearing apparatus. But the official term is called a vestibular schwannoma because it arises from the vestibular nerve, not the acoustic nerve. And the type of tumor is a schwannoma because it arises from a type of cell called a schwann cell and is not a neuroma. So this is more accurate. Pituitary tumors we use. We can also use gamma knife for certain malignant tumors in the brain. Primary brain tumors, which means it arises from the brain itself. And you may have heard terms like glioma or astrocytoma. Generally, gamma knife can be used as an adjunct, but st standard radiation treatment is still the first line of treatment. But more and more, and I'll discuss this later, um, metastatic tumors, which means a tumor 
the cancer arose somewhere else, like in the lung, and then tumors came into the brain as it spread, those can be very effectively treated by the gamma knife. And um, I think that's a significant advance from uh, prior radiation, standard radiation. We also treat a lot of uh, vascular malformations called AVMs. These can cause brain hemorrhaging, and when they're discovered, they can be removed by surgery, but the gamma knife is another option. And then finally, we treat trigeminal neuralgia. I do have webinars for trigeminal neuralgia, meningiomas, brain tumors, and different cysts um, that you can see separately that will give you a lot of information about those specific conditions. So what are the results of the gamma knife treatment? Um, what we want to do if you have a tumor is make it disappear or at least stop growing. And if a tumor isn't causing problems just from the size, and I'll talk about that later, then just stopping it from growing if it's permanent is an adequate treatment. And that's what happens. For example, if you um, treat a meningioma or a vestibular schwannoma, there's a 95% chance over the next 10 years that the tumor will not grow doesn't disappear, but it won't grow. And if you make it 10 years, chances are you'll make it the rest of your life without it growing. We do follow up imaging to verify that, but that's a quite a good, good result. Um, about 80% of the treated AVMs just disappear completely, which is what we need for it to happen if we're gonna get rid of the bleeding risk. For metastatic tumors, it can be quite effective, but the patient's survival and long-term outcome depends just as much on what's happening in the lung, for example, along with what's happening in the brain. And then um, trigeminal neuralgia it can eliminate the face pain, and um, and there are, but there can be a recurrence rate, and I'll talk more about that. So what are the risks? Um, and I've listed some of this for you. Um, generally, patients have no acute uh, complaints. That means in the first, you know, week or two after the procedure. Long term, there can be significant risks, but it really has to do with two factors, and that depends on the skill of your treatment team. One is how much dose did you deliver, or how much radiation. Of course, the higher the dose, the more effective it is in treating the tumor, for example, but the more chances are that there'll be some spillover and it'll affect the surrounding tissue, which could include brain matter itself or something like a nerve that comes from the brain that goes to your eye, for example, that you see with. The second factor is how conformal or how closely do you shape the radiation to fit the size of the tumor. As we get to the examples, you'll see that the tumors are not all perfect globes or balls. So the more conformal you are, the more um, radiation you deliver to the tumor and the less to the surrounding brain. You know, in our program, we spend a lot of time and we have experience uh, doing this well, spending, making sure that our treatments are very conformal and picking a safe dose. So um, I can't recall the last time anybody's had a significant neurological change as a result of the treatment, but it can happen. And there are places that, you know, where the complication rates might be different. So really, it really depends on each place. There isn't a, you know, overall gamma knife complication rate we can treat. Just like with surgery, it really depends on who your surgeon is and how we do it, but again, it can be done very safely if the dosage is right. And it's always a balance because if we don't give enough dosage and the tumor will start growing again at some point even though it's safer. So it's finding that perfect balance that's uh, the skill, uh, an important part of this procedure. So how do we decide if the gamma knife is right for you? And there are lots of factors to think about. First is what kind of lesion do you have? Now, some types of tumors are very amenable to radiation and gamma knife treatment, others aren't. For example, a vestibular schwannoma, if it's small, is an excellent candidate. What about the size and location? 
you know, is it easy for us to get to by surgery? And that means it's very superficial. Or if the tumor is too big, it presents two problems for the gamma knife. One, when the radiation amount increases, the risk goes up. So at a certain size, and a general rule of thumb is about a three centimeter diameter, but that's not always accurate. It depends on many factors. The risks go up and the ability to control the tumor goes down. The other issue is if the tumor is pressing on a critical brain to structure and producing symptoms for the patient, then the gamma knife is not going to take away that pressure, what we call the mass effect. So in that case, we may want to go to surgery and just remove it. Surgery is the only way to get all those cells of the tumor out of your head and your brain. But that's not always what we want to do. We often think about the age and health of the patient. If you have trigeminal neuralgia and you're 80 years old, there is a surgery option, but I'm going to be very reluctant because of the high risks of the general anesthetic. So the gamma knife is much better. But if you're young, because the surgical results for trigeminal neuralgia is better, it might be much better to do surgery. And again, you can hear about all that in my trigeminal neuralgia webinar. So those are all the factors that I look at before I make a recommendation to each of my patients. Now, I'm not a believer in laying out multiple options and saying, here's what we can do, you choose. I think when you come see me as a patient, one of the things I provide for you is my experience and expertise, and I will generally have a specific recommendation if I think one option is the best. But there are definitely instances where there are multiple options that are equivalently good, and in that situation, I will explain all the different options, and then you can decide what is your preference. And interestingly, there are some patients who would prefer to just have surgery and have the tumor removed and go through the gamma knife route. Other patients would really like to avoid surgery if at all possible. If the gamma knife is an option over standard radiation treatment, it is far superior. And I'll talk about that a little bit when we get to the metastatic tumor section. So here are some specific case examples. Uh, a meningioma is a benign tumor that arises from the lining of the brain called the meninges. So this is a membrane that surrounds our brain called the meninges. This tumor is growing from it. It's pushing on the brain a little bit because on the other side is bone and the tumor can't grow in that direction. This is a very small meningioma and I'm not going to measure it out but probably a centimeter or not much longer. It was found totally by accident for this patient. Um, you know, had some other issue, a fall or something, you get a scan, and there it is. So therefore, it's not causing any symptoms. And it's something that can be cured by surgery. If we did surgery, we can remove it entirely, but that's more invasive. It's two days in the hospital. It's three weeks off of work. And in this instance, it's also very treatable by the gamma knife. So this is actually a picture of the treatment plan. And this yellow line that you see is where the radiation is going to hit. And we go a little bit into the bone because that's not very relevant, but you can see how closely that line comes on the other side of the brain. Again, this was one where it was both options, but you know, just with gamma knife treatment alone, this is probably never going to bother this patient for the rest of her life and it's not causing headaches or any such problems, so this was a good option. And if the same meningioma were much larger and causing headaches, for example, then that would be an indication to remove the tumors because the headaches are likely to not go away just with the gamma knife treatment. Here's a, a different meningioma, and this one's much bigger, and at this size, we would probably be more willing to consider surgery, but this is not a tumor we want to do surgery on. And the reason for that is that you can see it's right behind the eyeball of this patient. This is the tumor. You can see on the patient's other side, there is no tumor. And running through this structure in this area are a lot of nerves that move our eye 
now very important in vision and making sure we don't have double vision and opening our eyelid. If we go in and remove this tumor entirely, the patient will wake up and, and not be able to move this left eye probably. And that's not an outcome we want. You can again see the yellow line is the radiation line and we're really not targeting the brain. Just press on the brain a little bit here. That's what we call mass effect. But this patient isn't having significant problems from it, so it's a very good treatment. The various nerves have different sensitivities to the radiation. And the area that's the most sensitive is what we call the optic nerve. That's the nerve we see with. And if the tumor is really near the optic nerve, that begins to limit our gamma knife option because we don't want the patient to go blind after the surgery. So we're very careful of looking at the location and making sure the radiation is delivered in an area that's safe. Here's a different type of tumor. So a hallmark of metastatic tumors, which means it came from somewhere else, like the lung or colon, is they tend to be rounder. They are almost always inside the brain matter itself. And often you see several of them, like this patient has two. This is a perfect candidate for the gamma knife. This is a deep tumor. You can see that inside a critical structure called the brainstem. If I were to try to remove this tumor, I'd have to go through all of this normal tissue somewhere, and that would be devastating. So surgery is not a good option. There's a second tumor here. In the old days, we used to treat this, and still, I guess, you know, this isn't considered standard treatment, so I'm not criticizing it if you've had that or other doctors are doing it. But certainly, what we used to do is called whole brain radiation. That means that a beam of radiation goes across the whole head. The advantage of that is there may be little tumor cells, like here or there or here, that may not be visible as a tumor now, but in two months might turn into a, a little tumor. When you do whole brain, it treats all of those cells at once. So that's a real positive. The problem is that all that radiation in the brain can have significant effects. And about six months or a year later, many patients going through that will have trouble with memory or concentration or personality changes. And their families will say, um, you know, this has had a significantly negative effect. So what do we do nowadays? Well, we, again, you can see how tightly we're getting the radiation dose right on the tumor. Even in the brainstem, we can treat this safely. And we can target multiple tumors in one setting. There's a limit. If there were 26 little tumors, it would probably be not good for a gamma knife option. But mostly we see a handful or less. The main benefit is, again, the tumor gets a lot of dose, but all the surrounding brain gets very little radiation. So we just don't have those cognitive issues. What's going to happen in two months if we do see one or two other little lesions somewhere in the brain? Well, then we can do a second gamma knife treatment and sometimes even a third. But because by that time the patient started chemotherapy and getting treatment for the primary source of the tumor, we don't expect there to be constantly new tumors coming out. And as we've gone to this methodology, we found that two and sometimes three gamma knife treatments is all you need. It's only three days of treatment. It's even less than standard radiation. And again, the risks and long-term out outcome are uh, quite good. This is another example of a different patient with multiple small tumors. And we can, and you can see one here just on different planes, and um, you know we can target it quite effectively. Okay, trigeminal neuralgia. For those of you that are familiar with this condition, it's a spontaneous, um, very pain, painful facial pain that develops. It generally develops from an artery touching a nerve, but not always. It can also develop from multiple sclerosis. There is a surgery that's highly effective that has a, about a 10% recurrence rate over the first 10 years. But the gamma knife treatment can be very effective. And here's an example of a patient who has left trigeminal neuralgia. And I don't know if you can see that well, but you can see a little round dot here. 
maybe a little better here. This is the patient's trigeminal nerve coming from the brainstem going out toward the face. The nerve runs in this direction, carries sensation, and when you hit it with radiation, what the radiation does is affects not the nerve, it doesn't kill the nerve, so you can maybe get a little numbness, but your sensation is largely intact, but it takes away some of the myelinating cells that creates a insulation around the nerve. And that change can diminish the excitability and transmission of sensation, and often the patients will get good relief. Not everybody, however, and the recurrence rate is much higher, often as much as 30% over the first five years. So it can be an effective treatment. It's not our first line of treatment for trigeminal neuralgia. We would prefer the surgery, but for patients who've either had surgery already or have some reason why surgery is not a good option, the gamma knife is a very good treatment. Here's a, another patient with right-sided trigeminal neuralgia, and again, you can see the trigeminal nerve. It's very clear when we get into um, you know, the imaging. The reason why you don't see this on the left is that it's at a different level and we're just going through slices. And again, here's the target. If you've had gamma knife treatment for trigeminal neuralgia, you should be aware that it typically takes one to two months for it to kick in, that the treatment isn't immediate and therefore you should stay on your medications. And uh, I give all those instructions to my patients at the time of the procedure. This is a different type of tumor. It's a primary brain tumor called a glioblastoma. This patient had surgery, which was the first step. The surgery in this instance um, helped make the diagnosis, and we removed a lot of tumor. Then there was standard radiation treatment, and then by getting follow-up MRIs at frequent intervals, we found this was about 12 months after the standard radiation was over, two areas where it looked like the tumor was regrowing. The rest of the area looked very clean. And this was a good instance where we're able to target just the areas we want and deliver a radiation boost all in one day to help control this tumor. And the patient also goes on a different chemotherapy regimen at the same time. This is a picture of an arteriovenous malformation. This is what's called an arteriogram, which is a dye study in the blood vessels. These are pictures of the blood vessels itself. An AVM is a tangle of blood vessels that can hemorrhage. It's a birth defect, which means for most of us, we were born with it. It's not a genetic problem. It's just something that happened when we were in our mother's womb. And it can sit there and not cause any symptoms until it can cause a seizure or headaches, or it can actually rupture, which can be quite a dangerous situation. So these AVMs can be removed by surgery, which gives immediate protection from the hemorrhaging, but depending on the location or where the AVM is, the surgery can be risky because we are operating on blood vessels and sometimes it can be deep in the brain. So for selected AVMs, the gamma knife is a good option, and again, what we do is we deliver the radiation in a very conformal way around the AVM, and we get both an MRI and an angiogram, and we target it. And if the treatment works over about two years, 80% of the patients will have this regress and go away completely, which means they're cured. For 20% of the patients, it will not work, and then you'll have to have surgery or other treatments. So again, there are two tools for this, surgery and gamma knife and uh, we both often use them to, in tandem to get the best results possible, which is getting rid of the lesion, but doing it in a way where the patient does not suffer uh, consequences, if at all possible. And this is an example of a AVM that was treated previously. This is a smaller AVM, but the AVM is right here. Deep location, small, that's ideal for gamma knife. And it only took one year, and you can see it's just gone. And the regular blood vessels are all normal. And this is a very good result to the gamma knife. Finally, I'm going to talk about vestibular schwannomas because we do treat a lot of tumors in this. Um, often patients start to have a little hearing loss, or they'll hear a ringing, or they'll get a little dizzy, and a scan will show a tumor. This is a 
vestibular schwannoma right here, this white tumor. This is the ear lobe. You can see the inner ear is here, and there are nerves that come from our ear that go into our brain. It's a complex of four nerves, and those nerves are involved in hearing for us, moving our face, and having balance. Interestingly, we can lose the balanced nerves on one side, and most patients don't notice the difference because the balanced nerves on the other side will work, and we can have one year working for balance. But if you lose hearing on one side, patients will notice because they can't use a cell phone on that side, for example. And obviously, if your facial nerve starts to get weak, then you're going to get some drooping face or motor paralysis on one side. So this is a little tumor that's growing on the vestibular nerve. In the old days, we used to operate on all of these, and when they're small like that, the results can be quite good. But there's a few consequences of surgery. One, um, most patients lose hearing with surgery because the hearing nerve, it turns out, is very sensitive more than the other nerves. And many patients get at least a temporary weakness of the face, which is a big deal. It's quite disfiguring, although most of the time, you know, that will resolve. But as the tumor gets larger, the more likely that the face function will be permanently affected. So what happens if we do the gamma knife? Just like the meningioma, if we target this and do it well and do it safely, the patient's schwannoma will just stop growing, and that might be the only treatment this patient needs. What about their hearing? If they haven't lost their hearing um, already, many patients, maybe slightly more than half, will lose hearing with a gamma knife treatment too. So that's something you have to know that the hearing nerve is sensitive to the radiation, just like the surgery. But if you don't treat this and the tumor keeps growing, you're going to lose hearing and the treatment will get more difficult. Uh, the facial function really is not affected by the gamma knife at all. And you don't have to go through a relatively significant operation. So small vestibular schwannomas, particularly as we grow older, it's a very good candidate for gamma nerve treatment. What if when they're larger? This is a vestibular schwannoma also, but unlike that little part, it started at the nerve, but now it's growing out. It's starting to press on the brain. Unlike the other one, again, this is called mass effect. So when there's a lot of mass effect, we have to start thinking. If there are problems with mass effect, like the patient's having trouble walking, or their gait isn't as good, then, then a lot of times we either try to remove the whole tumor, or one option is to remove most of the tumor nowadays so that it's completely debulked, but you leave a little remnant on the facial nerve when it gets real big so that the facial nerve function is good, and then you can gamma knife the rest. So these are both tools we can use. So you've seen us or somebody else, and you're going to have the procedure. This is what we're going to do going forward. You come in first, and under local anesthesia, this frame is placed. This is the hardest part of the surgery. These screws actually bolt through the scalp into the skull, and it's important because this frame, which is our targeting frame, has to be securely fixated for the remainder of the procedure. And this is how we can precisely target it to a millimeter accuracy. Once this is on, the majority of the patients will then get an MRI scan only with the frame on because we need to see the relationship of this frame to your lesion. And then we use that relationship to target the beam onto the lesion. If you have an AVM, that would be the only instance, you also get an ar arteriogram at the same time. So you get the frame, then you go and get the procedures, the diagnostic procedures, you're awake through the whole thing. You're kept comfortable with, um, you know, pain medications and so on, and the nurse is with you. Then, when you come back, the treatment team goes through the treatment process. And this is a very involved uh, procedure. It can only be done with the presence of a neurosurgeon because we know the critical brain structures and where it's dangerous and where to avoid. A radiation oncologist who's very involved with um, dosing and making sure we pick a dose that's safe. A medical physicist 
works with a machine and knows you know, the specifics about the radiation, and then of course we have the nurse. And this is members of our gamma knife team. I'm the one in the green scrubs there. Uh, Dr. Shepard's another neurosurgeon here who often does the gamma knife. Um, Dr. Blanco is our radiation oncologist. This is Dr. Martyr, Magda Martyr, who is our uh, physicist. And for every case, there'll be three of us, and we're looking at the computer, and at this point, we're doing the treatment planning. So the images come back to us now, it gets loaded in the computer, and we do a whole series of steps. This is a different patient with a metastatic tumor case, and we plan out all the treatments. We start doing it, so we get this conformal, then we put in the doses that we want, and all the parameters are defined. Once that's done, then you as a patient goes into the machine. This is Magda going, placing you in. You stay in the machine and just relax. The treatment gets completed. You come out. The frame goes off, which is a fun moment because it feels really good to get that off. You're observed for an hour or two, and then you go home. Okay, so now the gamma knife is done and you've gone home. What we do ask is that you don't drive that night, um, but usually by the next morning, you're able to do everything that you normally do. This is a list of all the things that we occasionally hear from patients, usually within a week after the procedure. Um, it doesn't happen to most people and it's not severe, so I don't want you to be scared about it, but some people feel tired Sometimes there's mild dizziness or headache or nausea. And most of our complaints have to do with the pin sites. That's where the frame attaches to your skull during the procedure, and the pin has to go in through the scalp. And so there can be um, numbness at the pin sites. It can be painful. There can be some swelling at the pin sites, and that swelling can extend into your forehead and around the eyes, that's pretty common, and there can be bruising at pin sites. That's all normal anytime you uh, affect the skin. Sometimes, just through bad luck, the pin goes through a skin nerve, and then you can get tingling sensations or even numbness at the pin site. This will be temporary, it can take weeks or months to resolve, but that will go away because those skin nerves regenerate, and the other symptoms are all usually gone within a week or two. So what do you do when you go home? Um, if there is swelling anywhere, you can apply cold compresses. This will come down pretty quickly, or you can just leave it alone. We do ask you to clean the pin sites with hydrogen peroxide and then apply an antibiotic ointment for a few days, and this is given to you as you leave the a gamma knife center. Don't shampoo or use hair products for 24 hours. And we also give you an extensive follow-up sheet of appointments, when to do the next MRI, and so on. For those of you who may be getting a trigeminal neuralgia procedure, for reasons I don't always understand, sometimes patients feel like their face pain is worse in the first week or two after the gamma knife, before it gets better. And that is nothing to be alarmed by. And all of these symptoms are normal and uh, temporary. So that's the end of this presentation. And I look forward to seeing you in either in clinic or the Gamma Knife Center.